and today is episode 400 of the hundred dollar mba show thank you guys for being such amazing supporters of this show we made it 400 episodes it's incredible before i jump into today's episode i just want to quickly thank the people behind this show this show would not be possible without my partner in business my partner in life nicole baldino she puts the show all together she's the producer of the show and she does an amazing job making sure every episode sounds amazing. I also have to thank our content and media manager, Cindy. Cindy Amila is an amazing, amazing team member. She is one of the people that really we can rely on at all times. She's the one that makes sure all our show notes look amazing. She makes sure that our website is always up to date with the new episodes. She makes sure everything gets published properly on iTunes. She is the magician behind the scenes. So thank you so much, Cindy, for everything that you do for us. And of course, our latest addition to our team, our editor of the show, I got to give it up for Carl McBonnell. He does an amazing job with the show. I wanted to recognize these people because I don't do this alone. Yes, I come up with lessons. Yes, I'm on the mic. But this show is possible because we have a great team. So let's jump into today's episode. Today is a Q&A weekend's episode where we answer your question right here on the show. If you have a question you want to ask, just email us at contact at 100mba.net or you can send me a tweet on Twitter, bizrepublic. B-I-Z Republic. As always, guys, I'm your host, your coach, your teacher, Omar Zenholm. I'm also the co-founder of The $100 MBA, a complete business training and community online. Check us out at 100mba.net if you want to build a business you're proud of. Today's question comes from Chad, and Chad asks, what have been your greatest struggles in business this past year? Wow, Chad, that's a heavy question, but of course, I'm willing to share to make sure that everybody who's listening can learn from my experiences. I'm still learning. I'm still growing, even though I've been doing this for over 13 years now. Entrepreneurship, that is. I started off part-time, and now I'm full-time for the last three and a half years. But this past year has been interesting. A lot has happened, and I want to share with you some of the challenges and the struggles we went through and how we overcome those struggles as well. So let's get into it, guys. Let's get down to business. This episode of the $100 MBA show is sponsored by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and you're searching for a simple payment solution, you got to check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions completely fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash MBA. Again, that's braintreepayments.com slash MBA. So Chad asks, what are the greatest struggles that we've had in our business this past year? So let me put a little context before I get started. A year ago, let's say October of 2014, Nicole and I were the only two people on our team, meaning that just me and her bootstrapped our business for a little under three years. We did everything, publishing this daily podcast, doing the Webinar Ninja podcast, creating a software, having a blog every week, on WebinarNinja.co, having a blog post published every week on the $100 MBA, our free courses, our free guides, all these things, Nicole and I did it ourselves. I mean, it was some serious hustle. I mean, and we were really getting burnt out. And our biggest struggle was really understanding how to grow properly. How can I grow our team so Nicole and I are not doing every single thing? And the other thing was that we hit a ceiling. We couldn't grow anymore. Like We couldn't reach out more people. We couldn't market our business properly. We couldn't make the right connections with industry leaders because we just simply didn't have the time. We were doing all the work ourselves. So I realized that it's time to grow. I need to start hiring some teammates. And for a lot of people, this is a hard or difficult decision because you're going to need to spend some money. And maybe at this point, you just became profitable and you're starting to make some money. And it's kind of a relief that you're, you know, you're not in the negative, but now you got to start spending some of that money on manpower, on other people that can add value to your business in different ways. And for me personally, before I started uh, partnering up with Nicole, all my entrepreneurial experience has been by myself. I used to do everything myself. I ran all my businesses myself. I didn't have any partners, nothing. I might have employees or people that worked for me in the past, but I was a lone wolf. So the transition of partnering up with Nicole was a transition in itself. So I had to learn how to work with a partner and share my ideas and make decisions together. But then in that next step in the past year where we said, okay, now we got to grow our team beyond ourselves and start managing a team that's going to be here for the long run. That was a whole different story. 
And that was a struggle for me because I needed to hire the right people. And at the same time, I needed to understand that it's an investment in time in training the right people. A lot of us, we think, well, if I hire somebody, if I have to train them, that's going to take more time for me than if I had to do it myself. Maybe one time, but then they're going to do it over and over again. You got to think long term. And at the end of the day, I realized I can't do everything myself. Nicole can't do everything herself. If we want to start growing as a business and start expanding in terms of our reach with our audience... We're going to have to let other people take care of some responsibilities so we could be freed up to do other things, other big picture things. So one of the struggles was building this team. Now, a year later, just to give you perspective, we have a team of 10 people. Now, even though we're not this huge business with all these employees, we're very proud of our 10 person team. We have nine full time and one that's part time, but we all are singing from the same song sheet. We all understand the vision of the business, what we're trying to do. And everybody's motivated. Everybody's pumped to do what we have to do every single day. And that, for me, is a great accomplishment. But it didn't come without its struggles. Our first hire was a content and media manager. And this is somebody who's going to take care of our site, our blog, who's going to publish our daily podcast properly, and look after all the admin of all our content that's going out. I wish I said we struck gold the first time we made a hire, but we didn't. In fact, we went through two different people before we found Cindy. So Cindy was our third hire in that position. And in that process, we had to actually learn what this position is and how to hire the right person for it. And it's never easy to make a hire and then having to have that discussion where you have to tell them, we got to let you go because you're not a good fit. I've done it several times now in the past year, just finding the right team, and it never gets easy. But then we got Cindy. Cindy was a part of our team. And it just was amazing to have a great rock star on your team, a great fit, somebody that understands exactly what we're trying to do. And then it gave us momentum. It made us feel like, okay, we found somebody that's great. Let's keep moving forward. Now, alongside this process, I'm hiring our team for Webinar Ninja, the development team, the software development team, the project manager. And I went through a whole lot of hires and fires in that department. Over five different developers, I had to let go. And I just had to tell myself, this is part of the process. It's painful. It's not fun. It's taking me a lot of time. It's wasting a lot of my daily routine time, you know, like, you know, training people and then letting them go. That's not fun. But finally, I found the right project manager, Robert, and our head developer, Manish, and we were just really built from there. And then they found us other developers to work with. And then Webinar Ninja started to take off because we had the right people in place. So that's been the biggest struggle for me, building out our team making sure we're making the right hires, training people properly, making sure they understand what they're getting into. You know that this is the kind of business you're getting into. This is what we expect, and this is what you're going to get in return. If this is the environment that like gets you excited, then we're the right place. If not, then we're going to have to, you know, reevaluate it. You know, maybe this is not some place that you need to be working at. So that's been a really interesting journey for us this past year. Now, the other part of the struggle is redefining my own role. If I was doing all this stuff before, what am I doing now? What am I going to focus on? And Nicole had to go through that same struggle herself as well. I realized what I need to focus on. What are my strengths? And I realized I need to focus on the content of what we were all about, whether that's on the podcast, producing these episodes, writing on the blog, or running webinars with Webinar Ninja to spread the word about what we're doing. I needed to go all in in that. And I also understood that as a leader of this company, I need to also reach out and make connections with other industry leaders. And that's why I go to so many conferences. There's nine conferences on our calendar this year. But the point here is that it's a shift in the business. And I had to struggle through and find my new identity in this business, as well as letting go of certain aspects of the business to other people. Guys, I got more on today's episode. But before that, I got to give love to today's sponsor, Edible Arrangements. As a listener to the show, I know you're ambitious. You've established yourself professionally, and now you're looking for more. Take the next steps in your entrepreneurial journey as an Edible Arrangements franchisee. Yes, Edible Arrangements, the brand that revolutionized gifting with handcrafted fruit arrangements and gourmet chocolate fruit. As an Edible Arrangements franchisee, you get access to an established brand of 16 years of growth, over 80% brand recognition, and 1,200 locations worldwide. You'll benefit from the know-how, support, and millions of visitors to Edible Arrangements e-commerce platform. Discover why Entrepreneur Magazine named Edible Arrangements a top franchise among their best of the best of 2015. Start your journey to sweet success as an Edible Arrangements franchise owner. Call 1-888-727-4258 or go to edible.com. Again, that's 1-888-727-4258 
or go to edible.com. One of the greatest things about business or entrepreneurship is that it's always new. There's always something new that's gonna come around the corner. It's always changing. You gotta be on your toes all the time. So this year's challenges may be different from next year's challenges. And that's a good thing. That means you're always on the cutting edge and it makes it fun and exciting. It makes it challenging. That's what I love about entrepreneurship. So if you're going through a struggle right now, understand that this is okay. This is your rite of passage as an entrepreneur. Everybody who has had any kind of success can tell you about their struggles. You gotta have your fair share of struggles that you could tell to people when you hit those successful moments. Just keep moving forward. Understand that just the fact that you're doing this and you're working at it, you are doing what you're meant to do. You are doing what you want to do. That grit in the midst of glory, that's what makes it so sweet. If it was so easy, it wouldn't be so satisfying. So keep your head up. Stay positive when you're in that struggle. Understand you've been through struggles before and you've overcome them and you're going to overcome this one as well. All right, guys, that wraps up today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed episode 400 on the $100 MBA show. If you want to show us some love, drop us an iTunes rating and review. It would mean the world to us, guys. It takes two minutes. If you go to iTunes or if you're on an iPhone or an iDevice, just click on the cover art. You'll see a link that says give us a rating and review. Click on that link. The rest is a piece of cake. You can see that link also on today's show notes if you're on a browser. Just go to 100mba.net slash MBA 400. It would mean the world to us. We read every single review and it helps us get more exposure on iTunes so we can reach more people just like you. All right, guys, I want to leave you with this. I love the fact that we keep getting amazing questions from you guys. Keep asking questions. Keep finding out the answers to the things you need. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. There are no stupid questions. There are no silly questions. There are no you know, rookie questions. Those who ask and get answers, those are the ones that win. So keep asking, guys. We love it. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. I'll check you guys tomorrow. A very special guest teacher episode tomorrow with Michael Port, New York Times bestseller and the author of his latest bestseller, Steal the Show. He's going to be talking about how to steal the show in any performance in life, an interview, a negotiation, a special dinner with that special someone. How do you make sure that you put on the best of you? How do you make sure the best version of you appears in those moments? Can't wait for that, guys. I'll check you then. Take care. Take care.